Hello and welcome to Invalid Entry. This is the second day of Advent in our Python library looking at challenge thing that I'm doing. And today we're looking at Beautiful Soup. Beautiful Soup is one of my all-time favorite libraries. It is a HTML and XML parser. I will not use the word screen scrape in this entire video apart from what I just did then to say that I hate that phrase. This parse is HTML. HTML is terrible uh, to parse because people make terrible websites where they open tags, don't close them, or they close off a parent tag, which closes off. Yeah. Anyway, um, so last time we had a thing where we could pull back using requests to get the text. So response.text gives me all the HTML, which is pretty horrendous. I may want to just find all the links in this text. So the way we do that is we can use beautiful soup. So, so from uh, ps4. Dot, let me just close um, that was, um, uh, import beautiful 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 soup sorry i can't spell right what we then do is we soup equals beautiful soup uh, response dot text that makes me a soup object which i can now query and i can do things like soup dot title to work out what the title of that page was or dot uh, string on that to actually get the string back uh, in case in case there's attributes and things I don't want to have. So this is super powerful. I can now query the page, but I can also search in it. So I can now do soup dot uh, find or maybe I want to find all the A tags like that. And that's all the A tags. They actually come back as nodes. So I can query those. So I can do for tag in find time door. I can do tag dot um, uh, string. Okay, so see what's inside there. Nothing. Oh, print. <laughs> Sorry, we're writing too much shell stuff. There you go. There's there's nothing in these links, probably because they've got images or the things in there, which isn't very good. Um, I can actually do tag dot. Um, I want to get a parameter from it. Ref. And that's where those tags go to. So as you can see, this is my blog page. So a lot of these are actually, I've got a blog, I've got an image, I've got the link in the blog, and then it links to who wrote the blog, which is always me. Um, perhaps, perhaps just I want to actually test to make sure all the links on my blog site work on a particular page. So I can actually do um, response equals request dot uh, get and then if tag dot get or um, target equals that if target dot starts with slash Target equals um, HTTPS invalid entry dot engineer slash, uh, not that, there we go, uh, percentage s percentage target, target if response dot status code equals 200, print percentage s worked percentage target else print bad link percentage s percentage typed so now what i have here is i have a bad um requests request dot get target i have a primitive um See, I've never tested this before. So what I have now is a primitive um, web crawler in like a few lines of code, which I'm now going through and checking all these things actually work as a URL. And they all give me a 200 back. Now, this actually isn't very good because I probably want to check it's actually got three or, four, uh, uh, three or four redirects are probably valid. There's other things here which are probably valid. So I probably want to make this better. There's tons of libraries that do web crawling as well. Uh, the other thing we can do really nicely is we can also do for tag uh, for uh, image in... Uh, soup dot um, find all image uh, this print image uh, dot get uh, source for images I can do HTML so uh, that should have been in quote marks because they're image tags wow wow it's getting late I need to stop so we're going through all the images now 
and you're seeing all of the images print off that are on my thing. There's a lot of grammar time images going on here, a lot of blog contents and that. Um, I probably should check these slash slashes there because slash slashes mean use the same protocol but not necessarily the same root of the site. Um, so that's it really. That is, in a nutshell, the second one. Beautiful soup. Check out its website. Its website is the old Python 2 style documentation. Uh, it's rather good. It can do all of the... Um, what you might consider to be XPath type things. You can then navigate nodes, so you can find a tag and then say, well, what's the parent tag of it? It's actually got like a full tree document structure. It will parse HTML. It can also install extra parsers, so you can strictly parse XML if that's your thing. Although if you parse strictly parsing XML, you should be shot. Like PyXML and things like that. So yes, it's, it's, it, it, it's a really, really good, powerful tool. Um, if I have to parse dodgy XML or XML from a suspicious source, any external XML coming in, any HTML, I always put it in Beautiful Soup. It is my go-to library of choice uh, for XML-like languages that I need to parse. Uh, and that's it. That's all I have for today. If you're enjoying this series, please hit like, please hit subscribe. And also, please go down below and leave in the comments your favourite uh, Python library. And um, feel free to say Beautiful Soup, because I think by far requests... I may have said in the last episode, Quest was my favourite. Beautiful Soup is my favourite. Um, and I think it's underrated. I think not enough people know about it. Uh, and that's it.